Hi everyone. I um, just wanted to do a quick video today. Uh, it's a little overdue, but this is celebrating 1,000 subscribers! Woo! 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 Which um, might not be a big deal to some people, but to me that that number actually means quite a lot because I don't think I know a thousand people. Maybe I've, well, I must have met more than that, but the truth is a lot of you guys I've never met before. So what I wanted to talk about today was for those of you who don't really know who I am and have just seen videos of me spouting nonsense about Macs and PCs and iPads and guitar cabs and speakers, I just wanted to talk about everyone's favorite subjects, which in this case is me. Because um, it's something I don't really talk about in videos, so I thought it'd be quite nice to uh, give you some background on uh, who this guy is. So, you can tell from the videos, my name is Adam Steele, and I am a music producer from Manchester in England. And I've pretty much always done that. I mean, I'm 30 years old now, and when I was about seven or eight, I was you know, making pretend radio shows on an old cassette deck with a you know, microphone. And around the same time, uh, a family friend gave me an old computer cast off from the 80s. And that had uh, a couple of problems with it, but they gave me the manual. And of course, what tends to happen when you're a kid is you go, oh, what happened? So I managed to find a screwdriver, opened it up, stuck a screwdriver in kind of the back of the floppy drive and suddenly saw and all these green sparks and for whatever reason that must have prompted me to uh, remember that and become obsessed because from there on I was in and from that moment forward I've looked at every kind of computer I can find and from the whole kind of you know making radio shows as a kid um, on the other side of things my dad played guitar when I was younger and my granddad played bass and I wasn't so bothered up until about 10 or 11 and then I tried playing guitar and got kind of the hang of a few chords but then at 14 the bug really bit uh, not with guitar though I was a bass player through and through and I was one of those kind of unusual bass players where it wasn't like you're not good enough to play guitar so go and play bass I was obsessed with bass my favorite bands then and kind of still now were Rush so I was a big Geddy Lee fan, so thanks to my parents for uh, for that. A uh, big Level 42 fan as well. And I found the Red Hot Chili Peppers when I was about 13, 14. And also I got into Tool from an early age. And so that whole like bass world of those big bass heroes really shaped what I wanted to be. Because I didn't just want to be a thump, 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 thump. I wanted to be able to do all the crazy stuff. I mean, even when the new metal bands came in, uh, I was a 14, 15 year old around the year 2000, and when bands like Limp Bizkit came out, everyone's like, oh, Limp Bizkit, oh, the rubbish. But Sam Rivers, the bass player from Limp Bizkit, is incredibly good. And I picked up on that and tried to play some of their stuff. And I'd never seen a five string before, so I ended up playing five string bass. And from there, I was in a, a band like you do, when you were a kid and no one around us knew how to record anything so I ended up getting a four track tape deck and starting off just recording basic stuff on a four track cassette machine. From there I got a, a zoom drum machine and then I got my first decent computer but coming back to the whole computers thing which I'd still been obsessed with and got a copy of Sonar, I think it was Sonar 5 or something like that wasn't very good but I do remember recording and multi-layering and multi-tracking entire songs before anyone else that I knew was doing this kind of thing I mean it sounded terrible but that wasn't the point the point was I was doing it so um being a bit of a kind of a, a child scientist I actually went to chemistry club of all things I mean yeah I know nerd but hey there you go that's me and from that whole science nerd. It was only when I was about 17, 18 and getting really quite serious about the whole music thing and computers. I was one of the few kids in the school who could reprogram any of the computers at will. Um, someone in the careers department at our school told me that you could make a living out of both of these. And then I went for a one week little kind of placement 
things like a, a one week intern at Salford University in their music production and boom that's when the obsession really took hold which is why from that moment on I wanted to do nothing but record mix and I spent an entire week recording bands for their uh, final year kind of project and we recorded 30 bands in three days and if you can handle that as a 17 year old I mean I've never quite felt the pressure like it since which means that no matter how crazy and how busy the studio gets, I learned very quickly in a baptism of fire how to focus. So moving on from there, I found out that you could do this as a living and a degree. So I ended up at Huddersfield University studying popular music production. And that was a very interesting time in my life because the first term there, I mean, there were a hundred people there that were wanting to study music production. They all thought it'd be dead easy and you'd end up like jetting around the world. And it's not, it's boring, it's tedious. There's a lot of technical stuff and there's a lot of work involved. But luckily for me, being an absolute nerd, I was obsessed by the technical stuff and I really wasn't bothered. So my first year, I absolutely kind of flew through because all the stuff that I'd been doing at 15, 16, which was getting my own equipment, recording, finding out what does this do? What does that do? What does this do? I was already ahead of the curve. It was only maybe the second and third year when reality kind of catches up because the first year is kind of bringing everyone up to speed. Suddenly, it was like, ah, right, yeah, this is difficult now. So then I ended up blending in with everybody else, but in my spare time, again, there were not very many of us recording in our spare time. And every chance I got, I think I recorded four EPs in an album using university equipment. And all because I was driven to do it because that was what I wanted to do. I would find every excuse to use every piece of equipment that I could. And that's still something that I get today. I mean, guitarists get you know, gas, gear acquisition syndrome and tech nerds get very much the same thing. If you've seen the videos that I did comparing microphones, those are things that I've, I've collected over 15 years. But it's because each one does a different thing and a different thing and a different thing. And it's like, I need this for that and this for that and this for that. Could I record with two microphones? Probably. But the obsession drives. Outside of university, I was still obsessed. It's one of those things where I think when an obsession really grips you, it never leaves. So after graduating and get my first recording studio kind of thing, uh, which didn't go very well, which is not going to when you're 21, you've got a head full of ideas. Um, after that, I became a chef, which is my other great love is cooking. But I would go home at night, 11, 12 p.m and then I'd be mixing an album for someone till three or four in the morning and then getting in trouble every day for, uh, for being tired every day. But I didn't really care. That was my obsession. That was what I wanted to do. And so, so a couple of years into being a chef, I ended up reconnecting with an old friend of mine uh, who is a guy called Liam Wright. Um, I actually did a Rock Talk, ep talk episode with him, uh, which I'll put in the description. And Liam's one of my best friends now. And at the time, uh, we knew each other from school and Liam was a film director. And I'd been working as a chef and he says to me, hey, I need someone to do some sound for a film and come down and help out. So I went down and volunteered. This uh, tiny little company called Banter Media, which had been uh, operating out of a warehouse at the time. And I went down and the obsession just bit again and that was seven years ago and I've not left I'm still here I'm still at Banter Media Banter Media is the ground floor of this building that the studio is in and having yeah having a, a studio again which is something that I did when I stayed with Banter and we kind of got some jobs I started working in audio we re actually put quilts up in a small room to record things 
uh, through through the wall, through a panel of glass. It wasn't exactly what you'd call a studio, but it was something. And that something was more... Ah, uh, shut up, emails. Um, that was more than I'd had previously. And from there, again, the obsession bit. We made a little record label. We started producing albums for people. Uh, the deal there was that like we would do everything for free, essentially. Uh, which, when you look at it now, is absolute madness, but it meant that we had a lot more license to play with things. And that's something that I still do now, is that a band will come in and they'll record an EP or an album with me. And it'll be done and we'll all be happy with it. And then maybe three months down the line, I'll look at it and I'll listen back and go, you know what, I'd really like to change this. And then I'll kind of get back into the obsession and we've all done it. We've all ended up mixing a track into the small hours of the morning. But I'll ultimately come up with something that I'm more happy with. And that to me is worth just as much as learning new techniques, uh, getting new plugins. Sometimes just the benefit of time and perspective can really help the learning tool. And anyway, getting back to Banter Media, um, the sound work there was kind of cool, but there wasn't much of it. Most of the work that was needed was camera work, which is where I then... I'd always had a film camera, I'd always had a Nikon, which uh, pff, uh, now I'm a Canon man. Uh, sorry to the Nikon users there. But I quickly was taught the art of composition and how to frame a shot and how to make sure that all your settings are right, how to get the right look. And from there, um, I've gone on, as we've got to be a bigger company, to be kind of one of the main camera team. So that's why I'm able to film things that look kind of nice like this, is that I'm filming this today on a Canon 5D Mark II, which I thought I'd play with. I usually film on a Blackmagic uh, production 4K camera, but I thought I'd give this a try just for something a bit different. And uh, that in itself, the camera skills that I've learned have really helped me to make this YouTube channel possible. Because just over a year ago, I decided I'd made a few YouTube videos over the years, but I thought, right, I'm going to really start making series of videos now. And after a few and getting a little bit of feedback, I got the taste for it. And this is where all my spare time has gone. So the cameraman is me, the editor is me. Um, everything's recorded pretty much by me. Sometimes I have uh, the other head of the camera team, uh, Banter Christian helps me out and becomes kind of my producer and kind of steers me in the right direction. Cause sometimes it's nice to have a second person to uh, bounce ideas off but most of the time, it's all me. And it's tiring, but it's really worth it to get some of the reactions that I get with these videos. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about me, I'm sure people can tell you. And uh, I'm, I'm sure I could tell you in length as well. And if you've got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'm probably gonna do a couple of more techie videos about uh, what cameras I use and kind of what sound kit I use and stuff but they'll come out later in the week so uh thanks for watching this really appreciate it if there's anything else let me know uh hit the like button if you've not already subscribed then please do because even though we've hit a thousand subscribers we are always going to need more to grow the channel and uh if you've got any ideas for videos you'd like to see drop us a line see you soon